Good morning. Welcome you all for the discussion on the subject, the journey of petroleum, part 3. I am Jairai Nalathambi, Senior Process Design and Technical Safety Consultant in iFluids Engineering. Today we will discuss about what is pressure, vacuum, ejector, vacuum tower and the value addition of the results of crude oil. First of all, we will discuss about what is pressure. Pressure we all know it is defined to be the amount of force exerted per area. That is force per area that means in other words if you reduce the applying force and increase the area your pressure is going to be much much less. If it goes below the atmospheric pressure then it is called a negative pressure or some wide space is created that is vacuum. In the last discussion we discussed about atmospheric distillation that means it operates under positive pressure. It doesn't mean that it is op being operated equal to atmospheric pressure. It is being operated under, po under positive pressure. We know that boiling point is related to the system pressure. Boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of liquid equals to atmospheric pressure is the definition. Here the atmospheric pressure is refers to the system pressure only. So if the system pressure if you reduce we can reduce the boiling point that is the information we can get it from this. So in the atmospheric pressure atmospheric distillation we have some limitation that is if we maintain a temperature of around 360 degrees centigrade at the process heater outlet we can distillate around 50 to 70 percent of the crude to a usable product around 30 to 50 percent of the crude oil depends upon the type and nature of the crude oil it is going as reduced crude oil or the long residue that is cannot be used as a product in the market or for the end use so we have to distillate further at the same time we cannot throw away this large quantity of oil because of the unwanted reaction is expected as in the high, at a higher temperature Maybe thermal cracking may take place after 380 degrees centigrade. In thermal cracking, coke formation will be severe. So fouling of equipment and the life lifespan of the equipment also being shortened. And also the unwanted product of olefins are being produced because of thermal cracking. So to prevent this, we have to reduce the boiling point. For that only, we have to go for vacuum distillation. In the pressure case, gauge pressure and the absolute pressure, the two terminologies we use. Gauge pressure is defined as the pressure which is measured with the help of a pressure measuring instrument that is pressure gauge in which the atmospheric pressure is taken as datum. That means at atmospheric pressure, if you measure the pressure with the pressure gauge, it will read as zero. That is atmospheric pressure 1.033 kg per centimeter square is taken as the datum or zero. Vacuum pressure is defined as the pressure below atmospheric pressure. There is some wide space is there. Perfect vacuum is 0.0, .0 kg per centimeter square absolute. We can say that atmospheric pressure at sea level at 15 degree centigrade is 1.033 kg per centimeter square. In other words, we can say atmospheric head is 760 mm of mercury or 10.33 meter of water column. We know that necessity is the mother of invention. After World War II, there was a great shortage, big shortage of fuel for the usage. Because of uh, most of the crude refineries were processing and the distillating the crude oil using atmospheric distillation only. So, as the necessity arises, the invention also takes place. That is the vacuum distillation. So by reducing the pressure, we reduce the boiling point of the reduced crude oil so that at much lower temperature, we can yield some more usable product for the purpose of the purpose of producing various products. The driving force for their growth in technology and the number of size of refineries worldwide was the growing demand for automatic gasoline and aircraft fuel. So how will you create a vacuum? 
Thermal cracking starts and yields undesired effects such as stability problem and coke generation. By reducing the pressure, the boiling point of the liquid reduced and enables to distillate at lower temperature. For this, we use vacuum pump or ejector is used to create vacuum. Multi-stage ejectors are used in refineries. Steam is the motivating fluid. The steam and overhead vapor condensation takes place in cooling water condensers. There is the steam is injected at this point. There is motive fluid, and this is the head. Uh, this is a gas inlet which is collecting or sucking gas from the vacuum distillation tower. When this motive fluid steam is passing through through this motive fluid nozzle, and in the converging section of the ejector, this is the throat of the ejector. We call it as a throat of the ejector. the pressure is drastically reduced because of that in the diverging outlet or outlet or diffuser the velocity increases in multifold it attains a sonic velocity because of this high velocity of flow of steam a wide space is created in the steam chest and to fill that wide space vapor or gas is sucked from the vacuum tower by that we are creating vacuum in the tower the important feature of a vacuum distillation tower must be the differential pressure or delta p across the tower should be minimum based on the usage of steam vacuum tower is classified that we already discussed vacuum units were designed as a tray tower in olden days because of that pressure drop was very high that needs more energy to distillate so low pressure favors heavy vacuum gas oil recovery and profitability so tray tower was tray towers were replaced by random packing whereas in the random packing also we had a problem of fouling the fouling issues again restrict the flow and because of that that in due course differential pressure or dp across the tower increases in the early 80s or the end of 70s this is converted into structured packing towers in this the biggest advantage is the differential pressure across the tower is low and the velocity is high because of that fouling is also very less in regular packing or structured packing tower these are the towers nowadays being used the internal vapor velocity inside the vacuum cooler are very high due to the low pressure the packing in the column must have the lowest possible pressure to limit coke formation and loss of valuable products the tower needs to run free of shutdowns and maintenance for a period of at least 3 to 6 years depends upon the turnaround period determined by each refinery so this demands the robust structure of the column the vacuum column typically uses high performance structured packing to maximize product purity while minimizing pressure drop the vacuum column ejectors are fixed at the top when the motivation motivating fluid is applied it pulls the vapor from the vacuum tower so the motivating fluid and the vapor pulled in the vacuum ejector both of this mixed and get condensed in the overhead condenser that is coming into the bell that bell is called as a hot well and the side stream of products are depends upon the type of vacuum tower it varies maybe some towers will have a diesel cut vacuum diesel cut then light vacuum gas oil or lvgo and heavy vacuum gas oil or hvgo or the side cuts bottom most product is called as a vr or vacuum residue there is the raw material for producing fuel oil or the tar we apply for laying road or as a feed stock for bis breaker unit or delayed coker unit so this is the configuration of a vacuum tower this is the bottom product of the atmospheric distillation tower that is reduced crude oil it comes to a process heater again in the temperature is raised to around 380 degree to 400 degree centigrade because the tower pressure is low it enters the flange zone and it is vaporized 
it enormously vapor generation is enormous so the flash zone normally will be very bigger in size this is only a schematic representation so ejector is here vacuum system and it condenses and coming to a hot well in the hot well the overhead vapor hydrocarbon vapor whatever the vapor condens will be separated as a oil hot well oil and the remaining portion is water and non condensable is going as a sour gas we have to maintain a temperature gradient from bottom to top so unless we remove some heat from the tower that temperature gradient we cannot maintain for that we have a circulating reflex it is called as pump arounds or circulating reflex different people use different names no issue both the names are representing the same thing so lbgo circulating reflex as well as hgo circulating reflex and at the draw trace these product are drawn and it's sent to the downstream unit for pro further processing mostly this lbgo and the hgo is mixed together to call it as a vgo that is vacuum gas oil and it's a feedstock for fccu unit or hydro cracker unit so temperature gradient of the column is maintained by circulating reflexes vacuum tower bottom temperature is controlled by quench flow quench flow is nothing but the bottommost vacuum residue is used to preheat the crude oil so that it sacrifice its heat the reduced temperature of vacuum residue is a part is recirculated to the tower bottom to control the bottom temperature because bottom temperature goes high again there is a possibility of thermal cracking and if the level is maintaining at higher level residence time for the vacuum residue is also high that also determines the cracking so to reduce the re residence time we have to maintain at a low or optimum level so this is the overall configuration of crude and uh, vacuum distillation tower so this you consider the crude oil from coming and it passes through many heat exchangers in the heat exchanger the heat the waste heat available from the product or the circulating reflexes are recovered to preheat to the to do the desalting in the after desalting again it passes through many heat exchanger to the atmospheric process heater it goes to the atmospheric distillation tower from where to maintain the temperature gradient we have three pump around or three circulating reflexes there is top reflex top circulating reflex middle circulating reflex and bottom circulating reflex the side products are heavy naphtha kerosene lbgo uh, sorry lgo there is light gas oil or hgo uh, hsd that is high speed diesel that is the product in the stripper to improve its flash point stripping steam is used by applying stripping steam the partial pressure of the system is reduced so that the lighter components get evaporated so the stripped out stripped product is taken out as a finished product or product sent for further finishing to meet the bs6 requirement in the case of sulfur the bottommost product of the atmospheric distillation tower is again going to the a heater that is vacuum heater here the temperature is raised to 380 to 400 degree centigrade it enters a big column big diameter column where it flashes and a large vap vaporization taking place this vapor travels upward at higher velocity to limit the differential pressure across the tower by its a structured packing tower and here also the pump rounds are circulating reflexes there and more than that the products are drawn as diesel or vacuum diesel and lbgo hgo these two products are mixed together to send as a feedstock for fcc unit or hydro cracker unit the steam is supplied as a stripping steam to eliminate or strip off the lighter ends from the bottom so that vacuum residue will be free of the lighter components and this will not create any issue and to improve the velocity in the furnace tubes because the velocity reduces the effect of boundary layer effect that is the boundary layer is the layer which is which attaches to the inner wall of the furnace heater so if the boundary layer continues to stick into the inner wall it tends to form a coke 
and because of that fouling is taking place to remove or agitate the boundary layer velocity steam is also introduced at the convection outlet of the process heater so by this we have completed the crude distillation and vacuum distillation in the next next videos we will discuss about the downstream units or secondary processing units and the finishing of the products to the requirement or to meet the specifications thank you all thank you bye